Here we go with part eight of the black mesa locker room modeling and texturing and uh I'm pretty much finished the locker here i did a lot of that on camera and then all i've done is i've done the lock mechanism and i'll really quickly show you how i've done that i've actually joined everything together in preparation for texturing but that's okay i'm going to show you how i did this i'm just going to select something and uh bring my 3d cursor there so we can sort of model against that all right so here's how i made the lock it's really simple i brought in a circle I used something like 16. I may have used 18 vertices. I'm not sure, but we'll start with that. Rotate X 90. And let's let's just focus on those two things so we can look straight straight on there. Like this. Okay, so don't worry about that. It's a little bit off the diagram. So uh, actually that's confusing me, so I'm gonna hide that. I'm going to extrude in and then I'm going to select three vertices on either side and press E and scale in the Z pull them out and then it's just a question of shaping it the way you you want want it to be uh, I'm going to scale these in the Z as well pull them out and maybe I probably should have grabbed that as well I'll do that and I may take these and scale it in the X a little bit like this you see the overall shape now of course you add a subdivision surface and it starts to look like that all right so i'm going to come back in and select here e to extrude and pull it up maybe in a little bit and then i'll form this lip here and then i'm going to extrude inwards okay um, I'll select everything. I may have to select a couple of times. I guess I gotta get that one and that one. And I'm going to extrude backwards, maybe outwards a little bit, and then maybe one more down. Okay, I'll shade smooth. And you can see what we're getting here. And I think I'll turn that off for the moment and maybe I'll grab here all of that and I'll just pull it out a little bit back on and you'll see that it slopes a little nicer all right and then you can put uh you know if you want to bevel this you can you know sharpen it up a little bit it's up to you what you want to do there okay so we've got that now i'm going to reselect this because i'm not sure if i moved anything and then i'm going to bring in a uv sphere i'm just going to leave the default values it like that i'm going to look from the side and i'm going to rotate x 90 and i'll go into wireframe and vertex selection and i'll box select the back and i'll get rid of it and you might you might squash it a little bit and pull it in and shade smooth that and that's basically it all right i'm going to get rid of that now and bring everything else back so that's how I made that. And I put some bolts there. I don't know if I'll keep them or not, but okay. So what I've done is I've joined everything, but I applied all um, important modifiers, you know, modifiers that increase the number of polys. So for example, on this thing, I had a subdivision surface and I applied that modifier and anything that I had a bevel on, I applied it and I joined everything together. It's not critical that you do it that way, but that is the way I've done it. And so I'm going to texture all of that together. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here, first of all, and get rid of any UV maps that I've got. Come over to UV editing so there is the beast and so here's what i'm going to do though um i'm going to select a little piece of that and control l to select it all that's what i was trying to say and then you unwrap and i get a nice big circle i'm going to take that and move it out i'm going to select this piece control l and i'm going to u unwrap and i get this shape which is very similar to that so that's going to be okay all right so i've got those two right there and then i'm going to press Control i to get everything else and i'm going to cube project like that and then i'm going to select everything and i'm going to press n pack or uv pack islands 
All right, so hopefully that has left me enough room. If I zoom way in here, you can see that they're not touching, and hopefully Substance Painter will uh, be okay with that. So there's my locker. All the pieces are joined. I've UV unwrapped it, very simply, mind you. And let's texture this thing now. Here it is in Substance Painter before we have applied uh, or baked any mesh maps. All right, so let's do that now. Big mesh maps at 2K, uncheck ID. All right, now I can go through and look for any line streaks or discoloration, and it looks okay. All right, I'm not going to be up super close to this, so even if there was something small, I don't think it would be noticeable. Okay, so I'm going to delete the default layer, and we're going to start to texture this. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to add a fill layer, and I think I'll leave everything on, but I'm going to come to the color. I'm going to make it a little bit darker and go for that sort of, I don't know, sci-fi off yellowish brown color i'm just going to use that for now and i might change it i might even make them black but i'll start with that and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come to the magic wand and add a filter and come into the filters and i'm going to scroll down and choose this matte finish rough and when i do that i get this roughness pattern which kind of looks like that sci-fi stuff i'm just going to bring down the brush intensity a little bit and i might not want it that shiny but i don't know it's probably okay because it is kind of a plasticky metal non-distinct material all right so that's that's what it is right there all right the next thing I'm going to do is let's get some some silver metal on on there. So you could label these if you want, but I'm going to search for metal. I'm in just materials down near the bottom. I'm going to choose this steel rough. I'm going to drag it above the other layer, and I'll get this. I'm going to come into the properties, and I think uh, that's okay. But I'm going to take the normal intensity. I think maybe even right off, and I'm going to change the scale to I'm going to try four. Now, maybe even five. This is only going to go on a few pieces, so you're not even barely going to notice the texture. I just want something that looks kind of like metal. All right, I'm going to go with that. And I don't want it on everything, so I'm going to add a black mask. Now it's disappeared, but I'll come over here to the polygon fill. And I'm going to come here to the properties and click on mesh fill. And now I can do that piece. I can do these uh this border piece here these bolts which will take probably two clicks yes they will like that because they're two separate meshes and these ones the cylinder these bolts i'm not sure i got that there we go and you just go around and click and it will apply the material to those parts all right click the brush to come out of there and have a look and make sure we got that stuff okay looks good okay and then the ball um maybe Maybe just, I don't know what to use. It's probably a rubbery thing, but I was thinking of this this steel here. All right, and then I don't want it everywhere, of course. I mean, that's a neat material right there. So I'll do the same technique, and we'll have that. Okay. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, just a couple more things, actually. I'm going to add a fill. And I'm going. I'll leave the color on white for now. I'm going to add a black mask, and in that mask, I'm going to add a generator, 
and we'll go for metal edges and that should make them white for now all right and i can dial that back a little bit and i'm going to come now and change this i just need color really uh, i'm going to change it to like a black and then it's just a question of how much of this uh, you want i do want it around the bullets a little bit i just want something in there to darken up things up and then I'll do one more with the uh, dirt, very simply. So, fill, the black mask, let's change this to color and roughness. Put the roughness all the way up. Make this a brownish dirt kind of color. And here we could try, sorry, in the generators we could try just this dirt. And it'll come in like that. And I'm going to click on triplanar. And you can see it really fills in the cavity. I don't want that much. I just want a hint of it. And, you know, this, this software is called Substance Painter, and I'm not really doing a lot of painting, but I'm okay with this sort of procedural method where you just, you know, move sliders and stuff like that. And that is good enough for me right about there. All right. And so just another prop in the scene. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the tab button to maximize it. And I'll come over here and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to activate temporal anti-aliasing. Make it look a bit, bit nicer. Activate color profile and then choose a color profile like that one. And maybe even um, change, you know, the HDRI just to get a different view. Rotate the light. And that is the locker right there. So we can see that light. Okay, so what I should do is, uh, if I'm set on this, uh, is I should save this as a smart material so that when I load the, the other part that has the, the wire grid on it, I can be using the same basic material, the same color. So I think maybe that's what I'm going to do. I haven't labeled any of this stuff. It's it's all pretty straightforward. So I'm going to create a folder, and I'm going to shift and click everything and drag it into the folder, and I'm going to call this. Uh, let I'm going to call it uh, locker. B. Uh, just locker is good enough. All right, locker. Here's locker, and create smart material. And there it is. It looks pretty silvery, I guess, because that was on top. Now, if I hide all that, if I bring in that material in again, it's actually done it. Um, now, those masks are specific for these objects. So if I bring in another object, like I say, that thing with the wire grid, um, it doesn't have, well, it does have this actually, but it may have slightly different pieces in different spots. And so these masks won't necessarily work, but I can easily just clear the mask and select the other part that I need. But at least I get my main base level uh, and uh, colors and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, I will be bringing that into Blender and uh, setting uh, that material up. I'm going to be doing some more texturing, a little bit more modeling as we move towards the completion of this cool scene. Thanks for watching.